morning, everyone, and thank you all for being here and, and attending this really important event. Uh, I know that everybody's really uh, extremely busy uh, as we finish up the legislative business this week. Uh, so I'm pleased that you could all take this time to be here and uh, to learn more about the social and emotional learning program and benefits that they provide. And I just want to recognize Ann Nered, who's here from, from my hometown, and she's the one that really got me into this and has really, really been such a force in it. And, and then found out how, in, how important this really is to, to our kids. And I want to thank Mr. Schreiber for this wonderful introduction. And also want to thank uh, Patricia Incrosi, uh, Linda, uh, Linda Shea, Lucy Carney, and, and uh, Jane using this. Now, is there any way that I can learn from this how to pronounce names? Because I really have a problem with it always. I have a learning disability. I guess this. But I want to make sure that everybody is and, and uh, are all also important to this. And, and I really have been engaged uh, for, for many, many years in education in, uh, issues from my time as PTA president to uh, school board uh, president and member of the state legislature before I got to Congress and now I'm on the um, education and, and workforce committee, which is uh, of course very, very, very important uh, for this issue. And as anyone who spends time in the classroom knows, the keys to quality education go far beyond basic reading, writing, and arithmetic. And this is one of these things. And I think that really bright students really struggle every day to reach their full potential because they don't have the interpersonal uh, communication skills uh, needed to excel in an academic environment. And this is where you all come in and it's so important. Uh, I think that uh, in Illinois, we're ahead of the curve and we've, uh, we're the first state to adopt a uh, comprehensive set of social and emotional learning standards in 2004. So since then, uh, Illinois has become a national model for best practices. I have to say that really helps for Illinois because we're in big trouble financially and every other thing. So at least there's one really positive thing on that too. So uh, many of the school districts in Illinois have entered into partnerships with CASEL and each district that participates in these programs receives access to coaching, workshops, and professional learning community. Uh, and the results have been very promising. Uh, everyone from parents to educators uh, have seen these programs uh, and seen how they can impact a, a child's behavior and help him or her improve on his or her report card. So that's why I, I introduced H.R. 2437, the Academic Social and Emotional Learning Act of 2011. And this legislation will help to foster a nationwide commitment to social and emotional learning as part of, of every child's education. And it accomplished this by, by amending the uh, Elementary and Secondary uh, Education Act to allow school districts to use uh, teacher and principal training funds for social and emotional uh, uh, learning programs. And it builds on the recommendations uh, by the Centers for Disease Control and prevention to foster better learning environments that, that uh, facilitate healthy development and discourage high-risk behavior. Uh, currently, the bipartisan proposal is under consideration by the Education and the Workforce uh, Committee, and earlier this year, we were able to include this in uh, provisions within the new legislation uh, approved by our committee to reauthorize ESEA, and of course, that's the old uh, No Child Left Behind. Uh, but it's, uh, this is, we're reaching the end of the year, but uh, as, as part of this reform package, our legislation would expand the professional de uh, development activities. And this represents an important step for the social and, and emotional learning. I'm confident that any final ESEA legislation agreed by this Congress or the next will include an SEL uh, dimension now. We are reaching the end of, of the line here. Uh, the, this is our last three days uh, in session uh, before the election. We will come back for uh, a lame duck session. But since we don't know how the election is going to be, we don't know what's going to happen and what, what uh, bills will be sent up. But I think that, that it's, um, I would just say, if, if nothing happens this year, we need to have a bill in January, that is the best time to pass anything of, of a new Congress, that would be the 113th Congress, to have a, the bill ready to introduce in the first days uh, really gives us a really good head start because I think everybody is really uh, 
on board on this. It's just that the, 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 the timing, uh, and this session hasn't been easy, as you probably know, <laughs> to get a lot of, the, of, of, of issues out there. So I, I and hope that I will be back so that I can do this if we don't, uh, if we don't get it out in the lame duck session. So, but I will continue to work with the members on both sides of the aisle to keep pushing these, uh, these sorts of social and emotional uh, learning reforms. And uh, even if it's one step at a time, we were gonna get this out. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to the panel and thank you all for your time.